Okay, so so here it is. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my 40th birthday, and uh, Mom's going to tell the birthday story. Well, Jake was born early. He was a surprise. So, just like every other day, I went to work the day before he was born. <laughs> and I felt like, boy, I'm feeling really kind of, ugh. And I thought, oh, those Braxton Hicks contractions they teach you about in Lamaze class. And they're like little practice contractions. And, you know, you can have those for a long time before the baby comes. And I thought, boy, those Braxton Hicks contractions, they're like, phew. And then at the end of the day, I remember I went back and my sales rep, you know, was there. And he said some, he was sitting at a table and he looked over and he was on level with my belly. And he made some remark about, wow, you really are... And I just bit his head off, which was not like me. So obviously, I was transitioning through my labor, but I didn't know I was in labor yet. So I go home, and I remember distinctly, I sent that back to the note to your dad. I got home, your dad was ironing, or he always irons, you know, by the thing, by the bar, and I made BLTs for dinner. And so I'm frying the bacon and mashing the bacon, and in between mashing and turning the bacon, I'd go, oh, I have to go and sit down in the chair at the table. I thought, wow, those Braxton Hicks contractions are really something. By the time that I went to bed, your dad said, can you not lie still? I just couldn't lie still because I kept, so I kept thinking, huh. So I might not be too bright, but I went out on the couch and I took the clock that I still have that had a second hand on it. And all through the night, I was having contractions about every five minutes. Now, a normal person probably would have thought, I guess we should probably go to the hospital. But I just thought... It was those contractions, because I was a month away. So the next morning, when I called Grandma Frida, I said, I just knew, I said, I, I just know I'm going to go to the hospital, and they're going to say, oh, you're false labor, and put me in the wheelchair and make me leave. And I thought, mm, that's embarrassing. So when I was talking to her, I said, hold on just a minute. And then I had a contraction, and she said, if you're having to stop talking to me while you're having a contraction, you better go to the hospital. So I got all ready because I just knew they were going to send me to work. I got my hair done and put my makeup on and got ready and uh, went to the hospital. And sure enough, not only was I in labor, I was dilated to seven. And so the doctor wasn't very happy with me about waiting so long because they still like to give an enemas in those days. <laughs> Yay! No <Woo> enema. <laughs> so anyway, I got stuck at eight, eight centimeters and... They wouldn't let me go ahead and have you because they wouldn't break my water. The doctor that I had was the associate, and I didn't like him, and I was not going to allow him there. I was supposed to have a doctor's appointment that day, and I was going to say, I don't want him near me. I don't care who catches this baby. He is not going to be there. Who do you think I got? So anyway, finally, he agreed to break my water, and bang, I was dilated and ready to push. They said, okay, you can start pushing now. We had a student nurse named Ellen that was following along with us because they needed to do that for their class. So Ellen was there, and so your, Ellen and your dad and me. And so they go, okay, you can push. I'm like, okay. So I gave a push, and Ellen looks, and she goes, you know, I think you maybe want to just hold on a minute. Don't push again until I get back. Because I pushed one time, and his head crowned. And then, 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 so she went out to get him, and here's how that went. So we didn't have ultrasounds, so we had no idea if we had a boy or a girl. We never saw anything. You're just pregnant, you know. So I'm there, and I have no urge to push even, so I'm fine. I'm not having to struggle with that. So Ellen goes to get the nurse, and I say to your dad, Can you see the baby's head? Yes, I can. Well, does it have hair? Yeah, I think it has hair. My bald fam family with bald hair, you know. Well, what color is it? I think it's blonde. <laughs> I said, awesome. <laughs> so they came back in and said they didn't have breakaway beds. They had to actually put you onto a gurney and roll you to the delivery room and put you in the delivery room. So they rolled me down there and they're saying, don't push, don't push. And I went, I'm fine. And it's like everybody was so excited. And it was just like slow motion for me. I was like, relax, I'm not going to push. So we got there, and they put all these drapes all over me, you know, and they let you have a little mirror up there so you can watch the baby being born, and I didn't have my glasses on, I'm going, that's it? And it was this little orange painted up something, and they had the drapes all over me. I'm like, must we? So then the 
doctor was not going to be there, I thought, which I was happy about. But he ended up showing up, and I pushed a couple of times, and there you were. So the baby came up, and they laid him down on my belly. And I went, oh, my goodness, and I put my hand on him. And I went to go like this, and they put my hand in a restraint for some reason. Back in the day, they used to do some goofy things. That's, so the doctor said, I put my hand on Jake, and I can still at this minute feel how he felt. I can feel how his little body felt, and he was warm, and and everything, and then the doctor goes, take your hand off that baby. Why do you think we have all these drapes on you, you know? Why do you think? And I thought, I could take my leg. And they had these stirrup things, they put your legs in like a little little gutter or something. Your legs are all up laying in them, all the way from here to here. I thought, I could take my foot out of here and kick you right in the face. I was so mad, but don't touch my baby. So there he was, six pounds and 18 inches, and he sounded like a little kitten when he cried. He'd go, So he sounded like a little baby. So then they took you away from me to take you to the nursery to be sure that you were okay since you were early. So from that time until 9 o'clock that night, they kept you and would have let me have you or feed you or anything. Really? Yes. So, so much for our bonding in skin to skin, huh? <laughs> That's for sure. So that, hey, no, and now here you are, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Enough. So, yeah, there you were. And so they would take him to the nursery. We had no room again. Now, if he had been born in April when he was supposed to be born, they had a whole new wing that was opening. You got rooming in, so your baby stayed there. And everybody was so excited about that because, you know, you're going to have your baby in the room with you, but I didn't get to. So they would bring him to me and let me feed him, and then they would take you away. So, hi, dear baby. Well, and so, that's the story of how I was born. There's still another part. You forget the flash dance scene. 